So, thank you for being willing to be here and uh, see what we can do to be helpful. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you probably, Emma's probably mentioned to you that um, we're interested to learn together about <clears throat> how we can be more helpful to people who want some assistance. Yeah. So I appreciate your willingness to come along and be part of our learning. And, <clears throat> and as I say, to see if we can do something to be useful to you too. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if we make a recording of this for future teaching? Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a bit strange, but um, yeah, I guess it's really <clears throat> But it's a teaching centre here. And we're, yeah. we're not primarily... We're, we're always wanting to be helpful, of course, yeah. but primarily it's teaching, yeah. which is why we're wanting to, yeah. to have the record for other mm -hmm. people in the future to look and see, oh, that's something I could learn from or learn about or can be a benefit to other people. Mm -hmm. That's why we're yeah. doing this weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so can you tell us, first of all, a little bit about what you like to do, what sorts of things that you've been up to recently where, <clears throat> excuse me, where you thought, oh, this is pretty good, this is what I like to do. If I could do more of this, it would be nice. Uh, yes. Um, well, currently I'm at art school and um, I guess it would be good to be able to go on with what I'm into without being, you know, sort of clouded with other thoughts that sort of distract me. <coughs> make me, I guess, a little bit unmotivated and... So those thoughts cloud you and get in the way and uh, get in the way of your motivation? Yeah, I guess so. Oh. Like, just, I can't really pinpoint. Yeah, yeah. What, what, when, when you are least clouded and things are going and you're most motivated, what's mm. different then? <clears throat> um, well, they only happen for small moments in time, really. <coughs> It's something that I struggle with. Oh, yeah. So, mm. um, so I guess with the fact that they are there for such short time, that you must be really aware of them. You must really. Yeah, I guess that um, I have like anxiety and sort of fear of not like if I don't do it well, then like I shouldn't do it, and that's like from childhood. So it's not really a reason. You've got high thing. standards about that. Um. I don't think it's that. Oh. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it is, so mm -hmm. I guess that's not very helpful. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So when when you when you're not <coughs> struggling with this and you're not worrying about the cloudedness and you know whether you should or can or what, <coughs> and you're just having fun, you're just enjoying yourself. What sorts of things do you like to do? That, uh, please um, to you? Where there's no struggle. I do party a lot. Party. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And. I don't know, that's probably not a good thing, but um, I like to be with friends and just, yeah. Do you say it's not a good thing? I, don't, I said I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Like, I don't know either, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but you like it. You like being with friends and you mm -hmm. like partying. What, what's the, what's the, what do you get from the, what is it about that? Um, I guess it's just like, you know, sharing and enjoying okay. people's company without their being, I don't know, I yeah. mean, I think yeah. everyone likes to. I think so, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, when I'm in a situation like that, it's just like fun. It's not, mm. not trying to achieve anything, not mm. trying to reach any <clears throat> goal or achieve anything. It's just kind of like hanging out, just being there yeah. for the sake of being there. Yeah. Yeah. And you like that. Mm. Yeah. And when you're doing that, you're not struggling, you're not wondering whether you're up to it or something, you just... I mean, I guess I have my moments, yeah, yeah when I'm doing it where I feel a bit, like, I don't know, <laughs> so I'm feeling a bit funny mm. and, I guess, nervous talking. Mm. Cause, yeah, sure. Yeah, but I don't know if it's, am I going in the right direction, like, it's sort of a broad topic like I don't know. Like, yeah, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Does it how does it seem to you? Does it seem like well, a, 
I'm feeling like I should be giving you specifics. Oh, okay. I can't really. Well, don't don't get too specific with me. I'll get. To, yeah. <laughs> I'll start to get a performance anxiety yeah. and think I'm doing it properly if you do that. Yeah. So keep it vague and uh, yeah. <clears throat> that way you can fill in the gaps and I don't have to worry so much. Yeah. All right. cool. um, <clears throat> but there's something about being with friends where, just in general, you can just be with them um, and you can be yourself and they can be themselves and mm -hmm. you can party with them, you're not trying to. Am I, am I hearing you right in general? In a yeah. Point, point yeah. Mm. yeah. <clears throat> And I guess like my friends are important to me and I have really good friends as well because I haven't like in the past I've been like my family where that oh, yeah. hasn't really been there. I've oh, always yeah. had my mates. So. so your family your friends are your kind of family if you yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. I don't know whether you know that old saying that said God gave me my family, thank God I can choose my friends. Or? Yeah. <laughs> A good thing. I think that uh, <laughs> most of us would uh, have to be careful how I say that in this particular situation, but mm. um, <coughs> uh, you probably don't know that uh, Gabriel's mother's here, Jan. Uh, so we have to be careful what we say about family. So, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. mm. Now, if we could do something here that would be useful, what, what, what would it be something about your, your thinking or your, your uh -huh. clouding or your motivation? Or? I think um, I have a lot, like the biggest thing that I'm afraid of is probably myself oh, yeah. <clears throat> and my mind and like, I don't know, yeah, and just probably just to feel like excited about what I know that I have and give instead of just, I don't know, it makes any sense. Getting into it, <laughs> getting into it in general. Yeah. Like that. Um, if you were less frightened, less anxious, mm. then more just okay with yourself, about yeah. yourself, would that be? Yeah. Mm. And also, like, um, yeah, because I feel like because I, have a, a fear in my mind because I do have quite visual dreams and like oh, yeah. experiences and stuff and mm. that sort of plays into everyday life as well. Right. And mm -hmm. just, yeah, this is one of the dilemmas of being in art. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's, yeah, like it's... I mean what's good. real? Yeah. Yeah. It's a dilemma. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, I mean when you, when you paint something Is that real? Or is that when uh, when someone looks at something you've painted, or you look at something you've painted? It's not just a, an accurate representation. <coughs> it's mm. somehow playing <coughs> and being creative with that, isn't it? Yeah. That's my understanding. <coughs> I'm pretty ignorant about art, but uh, mm. that's my. Uh, yeah. I mm. guess I don't know. This may sound bizarre, but. I guess what I meant with fear of my mind is sometimes like, like if I have anxiety dreams or something, I don't know if it's a mental or a spiritual like mm. thing. Mm -hmm. so, and if it were to be spiritual, what mm. would the implication of that be? That, that you might somehow be foretelling the future, or it might be going to happen, or you might be influencing something? What? <clears throat> is that the I fear? No. no. It's. Like, are you asking what happens or what? No, happens? just what your fear is. That if 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 it were spiritual and not mental, or if it were My mental and spiritual, is the... like that. I don't quite un understand it, and mm -hmm. why? Like, some people dabble in it and really want to have mm, so it's sort of embarrassing talking about it. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to embarrass you. No, it's okay. I'm just trying to. It's some, but I don't, I don't need to know. You know. Yeah. There's something about your mind and whether it's mental or spiritual, uh, and the implication of that that's yeah. somehow problematic to you. And in fact, it scares you. And uh, <clears throat> would it be useful then if there was less of that or 
if it were there and you were less scared or you were clear about whether it was <clears throat> actually mental or spiritual or um, what would be less helpful? Less scared and more in control. If, if it were, mm. if you knew which it was? I don't think I could know oh, okay. what I like. Okay, but if somehow if you were more in control. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I, it probably ties into other stuff like, I don't know, there's so, I don't really know like specifically what I should be working on, but I think that's okay. a good one because it is a big... Yeah. Well, it seems to me that if that's how it feels to you, that mm. that's the, I uh, like the way you're trusting that. Mm. You're not scared of that, you're trusting that. You think, oh, that might be a way. You're not sure, but that might be a way, mm. a direction to go. Might yeah. be a place to start, anyhow. But at the same time, like, <coughs> with this sort of method, it could possibly do the opposite, couldn't it? Like, of fixing it, if you... But, um, this is just a question. I don't, yeah, I don't you know. know. But, uh, uh, what, I've, what I've learned is that the worst that can happen is nothing. Mm. So, uh, I mean, s things do come and go, don't they? Mm. I mean, you can go to the supermarket and feel bad. So, yeah. uh, can go, just going to the supermarket can go either way, so I suppose. Mm. There's always that potential, but I don't think there's anything special about this. Mm -hmm. Going into hypnosis to me is like um, a little bit like I imagine what it would be like to do painting. Do you, do you, do you said you're doing art? Do you do painting or mm -hmm. painting? Painting and sculpture. <clears throat> like you start with a canvas. Mm. Yeah. Canvas. You start with a canvas, and you don't know is it going to turn out this way or that way. Mm. So you make a start and um, you see which way it goes, and then if it goes well, then you continue, and if it doesn't, you I don't know. Yeah. Throw it away or paint over it or yeah. do something like that. But I imagine that when you're starting to do a painting, you're not particularly anxious about it, or are you? Since I've gone to art school, yes. You're anxious about it? Yeah. Before I, I wasn't, but because they have a certain way that you have to, um, not paint, but construct and justify the idea all the oh, time nice. and it's a bit like okay. <laughs> I can't just so once you had that so if you had that structure it was somehow helpful when they told you what to do uh, before, sorry. before art school it was it was easier for you yeah well mm. I mean it's a good learning experience like it's great to go to art school and have do painting a different way before I was just more I just did it more with my like intuitively and just whatever mm -hmm. and sometimes it worked out sometimes it didn't but art school because you have to have a plan and that can some that sort of freaked me out and I couldn't paint like <laughs> did you um, had to just, have a plan did you say an art school? yeah mm -hmm. it's just the I don't know the way like a set certain kind of direction and oh, yeah. like anyway yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, I can imagine that uh, I'd get freaked out by that too. Mm. You know, if you trust yourself and you follow your intuition and it works out or it doesn't work out, but whichever way you feel okay about that. Mm. <clears throat> but if someone comes along and says, oh no, you can't trust your intuition, you've got to do this or that, then somehow it's pretty easy to get yeah. a bit spooked by that because are you doing it right? Mm. And that's the thing, it's been such a a stupid issue in my mind because that's, I guess, at our school you've got to just still like listen to what they say, like mm. the, the teachers, but also just go forth and do it and prove that. But um, they criticise you, but that's all part of like doing it. Not criticise you, but is it like challenge you? Going well, why don't you? Yeah, and yeah, yeah to. This is a dilemma. Mm. <laughs> but, um, it's a dilemma. You know, like, you just need to learn at art school to be confident in what you're talking about, and then you're fine. <laughs> but sometimes I'm just like, oh. So, in, in our conversation mm. here, Beck, 
I've got some kind of ideas about what might or might not be useful, but mm. I can't really know what's best for you. Yeah. I can't know who you are. Yeah. I can't know so much about you. Um, and so what my invitation would be is in our experience here for you to use this time in a way that can be helpful to you in such a way that you can follow your intuition and if I say something that might challenge what you're doing that might seem to be nudging you in a direction that's not necessarily the direction that you would take it might be an opportunity for you to look at that <coughs> and somehow make up your own direction about whether you will follow that or not whether it's worthwhile responding to that challenge or not or whether you can just allow what I'm saying to be in the background mm. and do what's useful for you without having to have any particular plan with the possibility that it can work out well or not because mm. there's no guarantees with anything that you're yeah. starting to create and as far as going into hypnosis is concerned I can have a plan that uh, you should relax your feet or relax your arms or close your eyes or something. But I would be more interested for you in this experience if you can follow your own intuition and just notice that as you're sitting there some very subtle changes can begin to express themselves and maybe notice that as this is continuing you can have as much awareness as is useful to you about what I'm saying, <coughs> about outside noises, traffic, your own thoughts, the fact that there are other people here. <clears throat> All of those things are possible distractions from your experience. And it might be interesting for you to play with that, not to try and get rid of them or to do anything in particular with them, maybe not even control them, although I don't know. It's tempting to want to do that. But if somehow, just by being in this experience, you have an opportunity to <clears throat> find out what is helpful to you. When you first learned to draw, you might have picked up a pencil and uh, as a small child and just made random lines or squiggles or what. It probably took a long time before you're able to make that line <coughs> go around in a circle and join up with itself. And uh, even later, longer, even later, to give that a name of a circle or an O or a zero. And so often in our learning, drawing straight lines, triangles, uh, squares, cubes, we start not knowing exactly how it's going to evolve, just how it's going to develop. And you go along with that and you find, oh that's useful, I'll do that, oh that's not useful, I won't do that. And all the time there can be thoughts in the background about what you should do, or what other people will expect of you to do, or whatever. And at the same time that learning happens. And as you've been sitting just so and I've been talking in this way with you, there are some changes that are apparent that have happened to you naturally, not out of your conscious intention, but just out of the willingness for you to be with yourself as a kind of friend to yourself and sit in this experience and discover and maybe learn different way of being, different way of some adjustments that you can make to. Now, I don't know how important it was for you to hear that dog that barked, <laughs> that car that went past. There are so many uh, potential distractions that are just there and we don't even notice that we weren't distracted by them. 
And I don't know whether you're aware that your breathing has changed ever so slightly. I don't know whether you notice there's an alteration in the way your hands are relatively less moving than your left foot is showing some evidence still. And would it be okay if you just allowed that to happen? Almost like you could notice that and not try and control it or make it happen or stop it, but just allow that to continue. And then, as this, is, uh, as this experience is evolving for you, to somehow, in the way that you can allow those adjustments, to shift the way that you can be with yourself, in a very general way, <clears throat> to find some way that you can actually c connect this with something useful for you. And one of the ways of doing that might be for you to pay attention to your right hand in particular. And I wonder, would it be okay if I were to reach over and lift your right hand? Would that be okay? Would that seem a weird thing right. to do? If you want to. <laughs> well, it's not what I want so much as what I'm interested mm. for you to discover might be. Sweaty. Okay. And if you could just notice something about your hand, if you could look at it. Mm. I have dirty fingernails. And if you could look at the fingernails and see the dirt and the fingernails and just notice that. Mm -hmm. And there may be something weird about that. You might have some thoughts about that. But I'm also curious of how it could be helpful for you if you were to allow that hand as a hand that you know is your hand to be experienced by you and just notice that it's there. And you can move it intentionally. But I wonder what it would be like for you if you were to just allow it to be there. As if it had a mind of its own. And as if somehow as you look in the general direction of that hand, you might be willing to notice a certain tendency. Almost like your hand had an intuition about what would be useful to move towards your face. And you can move it, of course. But also, I'm interested for you to see what happens if you don't move it. And notice that it can move by itself. And you might notice that kind of, almost like that anticipation of the hand wanting to move towards your face. And at the same time that that hand is moving, if you could notice that there are a lot of thoughts that you could have, what that means what the implication of that is, what other people might think, what you should be doing. And you can also just notice that hand. Can I say something? Please. It's disturbing me seeing the cigarette stains on my finger. <laughs> Would it be more comfortable for you to <laughs> look at your hand like that? Yeah. <laughs> is that better? Yeah. It's nice to know that um, you can make a small adjustment like that. Mm. And suddenly, maybe if you keep your fingers like that so you won't see your nails. Would that be better? You can even close your eyes if you want. Yeah, all right. Then you won't have to see your hand. Mm. And you can block out everything that's there that you don't want to look at simply by closing your eyes. <clears throat> and there are ways that we can, without necessarily realizing how, block out sounds, block out thoughts, block out sensations, because without you knowing it, you probably blocked out the, all of the sensations on your left foot, except if I mention them, you can notice them. But it's very easy to not notice the feelings of the soles of your left foot that you could notice, but you could block it out and not notice it. And when I talk about your left foot, it's easy for you to not notice your right hand. And your left foot, then is somewhere in your right hand, and there might be some way back as I'm talking 
that you could find yourself somehow becoming absorbed in some part of your experience. Maybe you're breathing. Maybe you're thinking. Maybe you're wondering. Maybe you're exploring. And at the same time, to always have in the background of this conversation that question of what's happening for you and what does that mean for you? Because no one can really say exactly what it is that is there for you at the moment or how that can be for you in such a way that you really don't know. Just like you don't need to know just when you take a deep breath. Just like you don't need to know when you move your hands and yet you do. And you let all of that happen. And it might be something like the experience of standing or maybe sitting in front of a canvas that you're going to paint. Maybe wondering what it is that you're going to paint. Wondering what it might be. And if you were to imagine now, did you do that? That you're going to do a painting now? That mm -hmm. seem a weird thing for me to ask you to imagine? Mm -hmm. And so the canvas is in front of you. Mm -hmm. How big's the canvas? It's big as me. Okay. And, if you to, uh, and are you standing in front of this canvas or sitting? Mm, standing. Standing. Okay. And you look at that canvas. And you're going to paint something. Is it okay if you do not know what it is that you're going to paint? Mm hmm Okay. So you're standing and you look at that canvas, you're going to paint something. You don't know what it is, but you're going to paint something. And how do you start? Do you start with a brush? Do you start with a, with a pencil or charcoal? What do you, how do you begin? With this particular painting. Yeah, this one. Um, sort of yeah. like, I don't know what I'm going to paint, but I just feel like Slapping some paint in the middle and using my hands. Okay, so you slap the paint. What color? What color paint are you slapping? Um, red. I don't know. If that's the eye. Purple. Okay. And red, which doesn't go even good together. It doesn't go good together. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh huh. Mm. So you got purple and what? Red. Purple and red. And do you put them both on with the one hand, or do you just slap it on somehow? No, both. Okay. And as you do that, I hope some of that gets under your fingernails, doesn't it? Mm. Is that okay? And in my hair. In your hair, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. It's good to get into this, isn't it? Mm. Get really into it. <clears throat> and you move that paint around, any particular shapes? Just um. move it. Sort of, yeah. Um, sort of like wave shapes. Like waves? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like not, but just sort of, um, yeah, spiral. I'm sorry if this sounds a silly conversation no. to invite you into. But no, that's cool. Uh, yeah. But uh, if you're willing to tolerate my uncertainty. Yeah, I'm about sorry it. if I'm a bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's no, we just playing. Play. Yeah. We just play. Yeah. So they're like waves, you've got purple and you've got mm. red in both hands, and it's under your fingernails, mm. in your hair. Mm. Okay. And I wonder if you could somehow, as you're doing that, get really absorbed in it. In fact, mm. find that as you're doing it, the more absorbed you get in it, the less attention you're paying to anything else. It's like, it's like you are that. It is you, as if what you are doing and you are the same thing, so that you're not quite sure whether you are moving the paint or the paint's moving you. 
quite sure whether you're forming some shapes with the colours with your hands or whether the colours are making your hands move. Almost mm. like there's a kind of a dance going on. It's almost like you're with friends. Mm. The painting and your hands and the paint and the canvas, they're all friends. You're just there together. You're not trying to achieve anything. You're not trying to do the right thing. You're just in the experience. Can you imagine that? Mm. Now, as that continues and you get more absorbed in that, you can get so absorbed in that that you don't need to think anything, you don't need to do anything, you don't need to try anything, you don't need to please anyone, you can just be in that experience. And as you're in that, the more you're in that, the more you can find yourself intuitively doing exactly what works. Because you and your hands and the paint and the canvas, it's all part of the same experience. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when you're with friends, it's not like, oh, it's my turn to talk or I have to be careful what I say. You just can be any way that you are. And as you're doing that, and you get absorbed in that, a whole lot of other things can happen. You can breathe. If you've had breakfast or lunch, you can digest your food, but all of that happens in the background. You don't need to pay attention to that. You don't need to worry about that. It's just a natural process that's happening. And you're absorbed in the painting and the moving and, the, and your hands and, the, and the, the, the purple and the red. Any other colors coming in? Green. Green? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Lots of blue. Lots of blue. <laughs> yeah. And you enjoying that? Mm. Yeah, good. <clears throat> now, would it be okay if as that's happening, part of the experience that can happen outside of your awareness, because you're so absorbed in that painting, that a whole lot of things could begin to readjust themselves outside of your awareness? In the same way that as you're moving your left hand, there's a subtle change in how your toes of your right foot are to maintain your balance, but you don't need to think about that. As you move your right hand, you don't need to notice that something happens in the calf of your left foot so that you're able to move your right hand without losing your balance. And there are a whole lot of things that happen in the background outside of your awareness. But you're, you don't need to think about that because you're absorbed in the painting. And one of the things that can happen outside of your awareness when you're not thinking because you're so absorbed in the painting is a whole lot of thoughts can begin to rearrange themselves, can begin to readjust themselves, can begin to move and change almost as if as you're doing something out there with your hands on the canvas and the paint and the purple and the red and the grey and all that blue. Picked up some brushes now. Picked up some brushes now. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you decide to pick up the brushes or did those brushes say, hey, pick me up, here I am? Well, or did it yeah. just happen? Well, I just thought like the spaces between my okay. hand painting would... Okay, you just yeah. saw that and somehow mm -hmm. those spaces invited you, almost asked you to pick up the brush and start to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And you're able to intuitively respond to that. <clears throat> now, you're not going to paint around the back of the canvas, around the side of the canvas. There are constraints there. You can't go over the edge. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And that's alright, you don't mind that? You have to stay within those edges, is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so all of that's happening, and they've got just one paintbrush? Mm -hmm. I've got a few. A few paintbrushes, yeah. okay. So if you can just allow all of that to continue to evolve with your using your hands still, or that just using no, the paintbrush? No, paint just the paintbrush. Just the paintbrush. Okay, so you can use the brush, and then at some stage, if you want, can you put the brush down and use your hands again or put some more paint? Would that be okay? Mm. But you don't have to, but you can um. if you want to. Might ruin it. Huh? Might ruin it. Might, it's always a possibility. <laughs> mm. It might ruin it or it might make it fantastic. You've mm. actually got no way of knowing until afterwards. We're just playing here. Yeah. We're not trying to achieve anything. Yeah. There's no award that you're working for. No one's going to mark this. No one's going to mm. appraise this. 
no one's going to criticize it or say what it should be doing. It's playing. Mm -hmm. Now, as that's happening, and all of those other things are happening in the background, what's happening with your toes, with your calf, with your shoulders, with your breathing, all that stuff happens, and you don't need to think about that. It's in the background. And a whole lot of thoughts, memories from your childhood, families, friends, that can all start to merge and move and... Uh, and they kind of start to blend with themselves. And just as you move that paint around with your hands, so you can move the memories around, you can move the thoughts around, you can move the people around, and like family, it could become friends and friends' family. And this person can be like, even though you know this person is someone that you're with now, somehow as you're moving the, the hands and the paint and the brush around, it's as if they are not only here now, but they were there when you were a little kid. And not only the things that happen with your little kid can be here now, like a parent is there or writers, I don't know what, can be there on the canvas now. And it's all moving, and it's all in together, and it's all muddled, and it's all blending in together, and there are all those different shapes and colours. And some of the things you think, oh, they don't go, and they know oh, unless they do. And sometimes there's a space there to fill in. You don't know whether to fill it in with a friend or with some from family or from some present or from, from the past, something from childhood or something from the future. There's a space there you might pick up a brush or you might pick up some imaginary situation and you fill that in and it might turn out terribly, it might wreck it and it might be great. You don't know, but you're just in the experience and moving it around and playing with that and seeing all those colours. What, what are you doing now? What colours are you up to? What are you, you got brushes or...? It's certainly got to be... Hmm? It's certainly got a bit dark. Got a bit dark. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah. Um, okay, so was, can you can you make it even darker? Yeah, it's pretty what, dark. What, what, <laughs> were, you, were you using black or yeah. grey or black? Black. Dark purple, some dark red, mm. dark blue, mm. black. No, no red. No Just red. Okay. Dark purple, dark, right, all black. Dark. Yeah. yeah. And you do all that, can you bring a lot of dark in there and you don't know whether that dark is coming from your childhood or your mm. future or your friends. Mm. And that can be there from, from your hands or from the brush or from your thoughts or from something you're doing with your left foot that you don't even need to notice. And if it gets too dark, what would you like to do? How can you lighten it? Light on fire. Huh? Light on fire. <laughs> well, that'll be great. But without doing that, how can you, how can you leave the canvas as... Mm as a canvas and the picture is a picture and and then put something on it so that's I mean <clears throat> I mean I don't know about painting but my thought was yeah. oh, I'd just get a tin of uh, white paint and splash that on that might lighten it a bit but yeah. what, what could you do that's not a very artistic thing to do what could you do that would help to lighten this well hopefully it's acrylic paint so it dries quickly okay <laughs> all right but, um, well, we're I just would... playing, so we can make it any kind of paint. Like instant dry. <laughs> um, dry very quickly. It's already dry. So what do we do now? Too dark. What do you want to do? I have to paint it again. Okay. So what do you want to paint it with this time? Um, white and light, like lavender colours, mm. I reckon. Okay. Lavender? Mm. Okay. And are you putting this on with your hands or brush or what? I'm putting it on with a big roller. Big roller? Okay. Then is that going to cover the whole canvas or um, how do you know where to put it? Um, yeah, across the whole thing. Oh, the brush. Yeah, I don't know. You're doing it, not me. I don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, we're going to try and cover the whole thing. You are? It's going to take a few coats. Okay, so have you got time to do that? Yeah. It's instant drying. Yeah. Okay. So you've given it a few coats and it's now lavender. Mm -hmm. How's that look? It's covered. How's that look? It's pretty nice, but quite, not? quite boring. Yes, yeah, nice but boring. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of black stuff underneath. Mm -hmm. Could you scrape through some of the surface and get to some of that? Mm -hmm. Just enough to make it interesting. Yeah. Hmm? What do you do that with? How do you scrape through the white with? How do you... The lavender, how do you... Oh. I guess I use my dirty fingernails. Okay, okay. Well, that's where that stuff came from. That's how you got it under your fingernails. Mm. And so there's going to be some lavender under your fingernails. Mm. Okay. So you scratch that and you're making this shape or a form? I'm drawing a figure. A figure? Okay. Yeah. All right. 
And you know that as you do that with your mm -hmm. fingernails, you can create the figure that you want to create. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can shape that figure in any shape that is pleasing to you or interesting to you. And any time you shape that figure in a way that isn't pleasing or isn't interesting or is boring or is too dark, you can just paint over and do it again. Mm -hmm. Is that agreeable? Yeah. Okay. So what's the, how's it taking shape now? What's it looking like? You got a lavender? There's a yeah. bit of black coming through in the shape? Um, well, the fear, like, when we canvas the head, yeah. it's sort of... Like the person's sort of bent, not bent, but yeah. sort of curled, and one arm is stretched up to the top yeah. left corner, and yeah. the other one stretched up to the bottom right hand okay. corner. Okay. Yeah. And what's the mood? Um, Look alright or not? I think that um, I should be. I should have done something a bit more positive. Oh. Yeah, what's wrong with being free? You, you can do anything. We're just mm. playing here. Not yeah. So this is not very positive? What's no, it? You look yeah, at the mood of it. It's just like... Like sad or know, pain or agony or what? Suffering? Or Probably. Bit of suffering? Mm. Okay. So it's good to know what that looks like, isn't it? There are some people who go through life and they don't suffer and they're very superficial. So it's good to know that suffering is one of the colours one of the emotions that we can paint our lives with. <clears throat> but you look at this and you think, is this an okay one or would you like to do something different? Um, uh, the painting. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd like to put a bit more on it. <laughs> okay, how would you do that? Um, do you need to paint over it or can you... No, I'd just like to put um, some cool, like, dot. Okay. Yeah. Are you doing that? Mm-hmm. What, what are the dot colours? What are the, what are the patterns? Um, like, um, like forest greens and like dark ocean blues, but only really small ones oh, and yeah. in like little collective. Yeah. So there's a bit of darkness there mm -hmm. that gives it, makes it interesting, so it's not mm -hmm. boring. <clears throat> but it's, there's something positive about that. What is it that's positive about that? Is that it's small? Yes, it's in how this painting's ended up. Just sort of, I guess it's just aesthetically pleasing. Okay. <laughs> like, sort of, mm. And it's, there's something aesthetically pleasing about this. You, when it was too dark, that was not aesthetically pleasing. When it was just li uh, lilac, it was not mm. aesthetically pleasing. Mm. <clears throat> when you had the left arm up there and the right arm down there, that wasn't aesthetically pleasing. But now that you've got those little bits of dark, forest, dark forest green, dark blue, in, in small pieces, that's aesthetically pleasing. When you look at that, and you allow yourself to be pleased by that. It pleases your aesthetic taste. It doesn't necessarily please someone else's, but it pleases you. It's pleasing to you. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you look at that and you're pleased. When you look at that and you see that it is aesthetically pleasing, how do you feel? Does that feel okay? Mm. You're not sure? Yeah, I'm not sure. <clears throat> well, if you could, how could you hold that so that you look at the painting and you can see that it's aesthetically pleasing and at the same time you could have some other thoughts about what this person might say, what that person might say, mm. whether you should, whether you shouldn't, whether you could, whether you couldn't, whether you ought, whether you ought, and all those kinds of rubbish things mm. that we all think, yeah? Do you ever have thoughts like that? Yeah. Yeah. Glad I'm not the only person in the room. <coughs> so you've got the painting, mm -hmm. you've got the aesthetic pleasingness of that painting, and you've got all of that blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Now, how can you look at the painting and give less attention to the blah, blah, blah? 
how can you listen to the blah 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 should should blah 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 blah, blah and ignore the painting? How can you move from one to the other? If you wanted to listen just to the that those thoughts, were they critical or something? Those thoughts. Mm. If you wanted to listen to those and ignore the painting, what would you do? Um, sorry, I'm a bit. I don't quite understand. <laughs> if you were to forget the painting for the moment mm. and forget the how aesthetically pleasing it is for you, mm. and just listen to those thoughts, which are critical. And so on, mm. How could you listen to the thought and not look at the painting and not be pleased by it? If you wanted to do that, like if I wanted to put it down, yeah. I would say that's not my style. Okay, so you would start to mm. say that, or almost like you'd start mm. to listen to those critical thoughts and start mm. to voice them. Mm. Okay. Now, if you wanted to give less attention to those criticisms mm -hmm. and started to see the painting as it is and allow yourself to be pleased by it, how would you do that? Difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know I know that it's not it's not like a simple answer, but if you wanted to give, you wanted to see the painting and not listen to the voices, not mm. listen to those thoughts, what would you? Um, I would remove myself from it. Yes. I guess. From, from the painting. From I guess, yeah, like process of it and okay, what and it means and yeah you'd remove yourself from the process of it and, and, and put yourself in the presence of what? Of just It's a strange question to um, ask you, I know. Some um, people might think it's weird, but I'm not quite sure, really, like... Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to be sure about that. Mm. But I'm sure there have been times when you have looked at something and seen it mm. and, have, and have really appreciated it mm. and haven't listened to those thoughts. And I'm sure you do that so often that you probably don't even realise it. You do it so well that you don't notice. Just like you don't need to notice when you're breathing. You just you do it so naturally. But I'm just wondering if there's something that you can notice about this painting when you look at it. And you see it. And you're not thinking about how it could have been or how it shouldn't have been or blah 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 blah. Mm. But you're seeing the painting as it is. Mm. You look at it. You see it? I know when I do something like that, the way that I can get away from the criticism is I can look and see what's there, <coughs> appreciate what's there, mm -hmm. see something of the texture of what's there, and not think about what it isn't or what it should be. That's how I do it. But I, you, you would do things in your way, I'm sure. Mm. So, can we come back to this painting? Yeah. Here it is. How can you look at this painting and see it? It's here. <laughs> here it is. Mm. And here's the background. Here's the size. Here's the shape. Here's the the the, 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 the lark. Here's the mm. the outline. Yeah. And here's the little bits of blue. Little bits of. It's exciting. Huh? It's exciting. It's exciting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you let yourself be excited by seeing what's there. Is that okay to do that? Mm. And can you notice, without needing to put it into words, just what it's like for you to do that? There's a strong emotion for you about that. You look at that. And the important thing, Beck, is to know that anything that I'm saying is way less important than the way you can make your own sense of this. There may be some things that I say, however well intended, that might be unhelpful. And there are some times when we hear someone say something 
unhelpful, that it really clarifies for us what is helpful. So I'm not asking you in any way to go along with what I'm saying, as if I would know. How could I know? But to have the idea that somehow, actually, I would say, more than you realize, you know how to pay attention to, for example, this painting. And you've had more practice than that than you realize. And you also know how to pay attention to those thoughts and not see the painting. And does that make sense when I say that? Without not just being polite and going along mm. with what I'm saying? Does it make some sense? So I can see it for mm -hmm. what it means and also for what it is. Yeah. That's a beautiful, a beautiful uh, distillation of what I was trying to get to. Yeah. <clears throat> and what it is and what it means are two very different. They're related, but they're different. <laughs> and if you try and work out what the painting means, you can't see it. Mm. You have to remove yourself, as you said. <clears throat> but if you can see what the painting is, then you can be removed from the meaning and what, what that's all about. And it's nice to know that even though those two things are related, they are very separate. They can be good friends. Mm. They can even be related. But they are different. I know uh, someone said uh, about one of my children that uh, they had uh, this person's eyes and that person's a face and that person's hair and so on. And I remember saying, actually, they don't. They don't got their own hair, their own eyes, their own face. Just because they came from a certain place doesn't mean that that's how they are. They are how they are, no matter where they've come from, what that means. And so there's something about that painting and what is there and what it means that when you put it in such clear, simple, words. Is that something that you can connect with? That's something that you can see? The clear, mm. the words, yeah. which words? The Seeing painting, mm. seeing what's there, mm. and comparing that with looking at the meaning. You can see what it is. Mm can see what it means. It is what it is. Always. And what it means is something very different and there'll be a lot of different opinions about that. And if you can look at this painting and see that it is what it is and know that you can also look and see what it means <coughs> and if you can do that with this painting which is not real, you can do that in any aspect of your life, really. With your friends, with your art, with your painting, with this experience, even with those tears. Because your eyes can be moist, and that's how they are. Hmm? What does that mean? Something very different. And would it be okay for you at this moment to notice that your eyes are moist and to just notice that they are? And perhaps see that you could wonder what that means, but you don't need to go there. You can just notice that they're moist. Is that agreeable? Mm-hmm. Would you like a tissue? Yes, please. <laughs> <coughs> sometimes if, you're, sometimes you. if your eyes are leaking or your nose is leaking, it's good to have a tissue. Mm. Yes. But it may just be that when there's moisture oh, there that you want a tissue, it doesn't have to mean anything in particular. Mm. There are some people, you know, who, uh, if they have uh, leaking eyes or a leaking nose like that, they'll have to have years of therapy to find out why, what does that mean? <laughs> it might just mm. be that you've got leaky eyes for the moment. Mm. Mm. Now, 
you and I haven't met before, you don't know me, and I can imagine that it must be a very strange experience for you to come and sit here and have a conversation with me mm. in front of a group of people, you know Emma, but you don't know the other people, and videotape and so on, and not even know what to talk about or what would be useful 